<laughs> you can do this, you can do this, you can do this, you can do this. So yeah, what you are about to hear is an Australian trying to speak Jamaican. Please, take it easy with me. <laughs> Guys. I am so sorry that it has been so, so long to all of my OGs. I have missed you guys so much and I hope you guys have genuinely been well and taking care of yourselves. For those of you who are new to my channel or don't know me, my name is Jess. Yes, I am Australian. I was born and raised in Australia. However, my dad is originally from China and my mom is half Ukrainian, half Australian. So being born in Australia, English is my first language. Apart from that, I can speak a little bit of Chinese and I am currently in the process of learning Jamaican. And if you're wondering why I am calling it Jamaican and not Patwa, then you'll have to stay tuned for the rest of the video. But <sighs> here goes nothing. I need a drink first. All right. Breathe, Jess, breathe. You can do this, you can do this, you can do this. All right, Iwa. Me, I beg on enough for judge me. Because me guan chat in a Jamaican for una. Una na judge me. Come in, I really good. Me think me can go on still. Jamaicans, yeah, make me know. Hear me, I say. When me I first reached Jamaica, me not understand nothing them I say. Me hear men say, yo, me general. Me think, eh, what do I mean? Then, me hear the men say, yo, fire. Me think, eh, what the fire there? Me not understand, I stress me, I stress. If a fire there, why we there? You see me, I say? Let me just find out, I'm just L up in Bridgen, so. G's and P's. <laughs> Then, somebody I say, I don't nobody I breed you yet. What do you mean? What do you mean nobody I breed me? I more stress me, I stress. Me think them go and put me in a one farm or something. No, sir. Me nah dep on that. Me nah go in a no farm. So, yeah. When me I first reach, me nah really understand them. And me start feel guilty, bad. Because every time me dip on the road in a one taxi and a taxi man I say something, me just have to say, eh, away I say. Come in, I understand. We feel guilty, guilty. And for true, me nosy, me nosy bad. So me after know what people them must say. So me want to learn and little by little me start learn. And it was Jamaicans. Jamaicans that my teach me. And here we are. <laughs> How did I do? Make me know. All right, I hope I did Jamaicans and their language justice. And I'm sorry if I didn't. Please not hurt my feelings. <laughs> now, I know enough of you probably clicked on this video because you wanted to hear an Australian speak Jamaican, and I hope I didn't disappoint. But I would really encourage you guys to stick around for the rest of this video because there are some very strong and perhaps taboo topics regarding the Jamaican language um, coming up in the following conversations that you're about to hear. Now, I want to introduce you guys to someone who has had a massive impact on my journey in learning how to speak Jamaican. His name is Andre Cuff, and you may know him on YouTube as Chat Power. I, when I first started trying to learn how to speak Jamaican, I binge watched all of his videos and I've just recently purchased his book Jamaican Patwa, which is helping me tremendously. So I honestly felt called to reach out to Andre because I had so many questions. I first of all wanted to make sure that I wasn't being disrespectful to Jamaicans by trying to speak Patwa. And when I was in Jamaica, I had kind of noticed that there were some stigmas tied to language that I wanted to know more about. And if you know me or have seen any of my previous videos, you would have probably figured out by now that I do like to challenge a stigma. So let's go. First of all, would you be able to like explain to perhaps those who don't really know what Jamaican Patwa is like what is it is it a language is it a dialect like I feel like there's some confusion around that especially when I was first trying to understand what it was right well growing up we were told that Jamaican Patwa was uh quite 
a myriad of different things, depending on who you spoke to. Um, when we were kids, the, the notion was that we should speak properly. And by properly, they meant the Queen's English. Um, something about that just didn't sit right with me because everywhere that we went and, you know, in your daily life, that's not what we all spoke. We spoke at the time we called it patois, uh, for lack of a better term. We don't really, we're trying to move away from calling it Pato because in my opinion, I feel like it's its own language. Um, and Pato just means a dialect of a region. So it's not a word that's um, exclusive to Jamaica. So Jamaican is more of a, um, you know, like you have other countries that have mainstream languages, like, you know, you have your English, your Germans, your Japanese and stuff like that. They're named after their respective countries. So I believe Jamaican can be the same thing. It is a process, however, because there are some people that don't feel like it is actually a language, but that's what I've been trying to do over um, all these years between the videos and the books and different media and stuff to show that it actually stands on its own as a, as a language. So yeah, it, 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 when you break it down, it, it, it actually functions as a language. So we're, we're fighting that fight right now to get it a little bit more recognition because it's world renowned. And with all the contributions and stuff that Jamaicans have been making over the years, I think it's only fair that the language is recognized. Exactly. Um, and I think that's really important as well, because when I was first like doing my own research, um, I was hearing things and reading things that, you know, Jamaican power is a dialect. It's often referred to as broken English. And then sometimes commonly even referred to as improper English. And I guess like given, like, like you said, that doesn't really sit right with yourself because I feel like it doesn't really give the language the respect that it deserves given the cultural roots as well. Right. To, to be honest with you, the term broken English is uh, something that's left over from colonialism. So, um, you know, we were once a British colony back in the day. So um, a lot of that stuff has been perpetuated by, unfortunately, even Jamaicans. Like, if you ask the older Jamaicans, a lot of them will tell you that, oh, you're, sp you're speaking poorly because you're not speaking standard English. But uh, that's the furthest from the truth. I mean, I'm pretty sure a lot of people may disagree, but um, it, it, it's... It, it's not improper to speak a, a native language or I consider it to be my first language because that's how my thoughts come to me before I can speak any other language. So it, I believe it stands on its own as a language. We're working to get it the uh, recognition that it deserves, but it's definitely not broken and it's definitely not improper. Exactly. I love that. Um, now, when I was like researching uh, on like I was on Visit Jamaica, their website, and they have like a section under languages. And they say that English is their, you know, formal language that they speak there, but they also speak Jamaican power. Why is Jamaican language not the official language of Jamaica? It's, it has to do with the governing bodies. They have to, uh, uh, and they make the point that um, in order for us to communicate with the rest of the world, we do need to um, have a grasp or a handle on the English language. I, and I agree with that because English is pretty much um, the universal language. I also agree that there is room for us to be bilingual. There's a lot of societies out there that they're bilingual, like uh, especially where I reside. Um, uh, don't quote me on this, but I think we speak English first and then a second language could be Spanish because there's a lot of Spanish speakers here. And then you have the other various languages. So two things can be true at the same time. We can speak English and we can speak Jamaican. And uh, we more freely communicate in Jamaican when we're home and most everything else that we do. The only time we actually speak English is in formal settings for the most part. So does it come more naturally for you to speak in Papua? Absolutely. 100%. And I, I have a theory <laughs> that I made up, I, and, and I could be incorrect on this, but I think that whenever you're angry or you're upset at something, whatever language comes to your head first, that's your first language. And anytime that happens to me, like it's Jamaican first, and then I have to express myself based on uh, the, the settings. But I'm pretty sure Jamaicans will attest that even if they're living overseas, Whenever they get angry or upset for whatever reason, the first thing that comes to their mind is is usually in Jamaica. 
and that I guess leads on to my other question. So you saying that that comes most naturally for you. Um, is kind of one of the reasons why I wanted to learn how to speak power or understand power because me traveling in Jamaica, I see it as a respect thing for me to do my best to learn as much power as I can. So how do you feel um, when it comes to foreigners speaking power and wanting to learn how to speak power? All right. So how I feel about that is you you have to – you have – to put it this way, a couple of different kinds of people that I have encountered in my experience, okay? You have the people that when they find out that you're Jamaican, they are they immediately break into caricature mode with the Yaman. And that, for a Jamaican, is a very jarring. And then you have the people that honestly want to learn the culture and want to connect and want to authentically learn the language. But just like any other language, when you just start learning it, you're not going to be good at it in the beginning. It takes practice and it takes years. Like, for example, I, my wife is from Portugal, so I'm learning Portuguese. And then when I do speak it, it's, it's not going to come off like a native speaker. It, that takes years of practice. But the fact that you took the time to authentically learn the lesson, depending on who you're with, you're going to get different reactions. Some Jamaicans might meet it a certain way, like, you know, what is far now try if you do? All right, you see what I'm saying? Others might be welcoming, like, oh, wow, you actually took the time to learn the language, to communicate with us. So it, it, it all depends on the settings. But as we spread awareness that, hey, this th what we speak is not just broken or it's not bad or it's not improper, it's actually a language, I think the mindset will actually change and you'll see more acceptance. Mm -hmm. Again, when you just start learning and you just start speaking, it's, it's not going to come off like authentic, like you live there. That, that takes time. But usually when they see that you put the effort in and, you know, and then the, the, the guards come down, the comfort level goes up and you, you generally get dialogue and some will even try to help you. Yeah, definitely. That's something that I've noticed as well. For like the most part, when I speak Patwa in Jamaica, a lot of the locals are really um, receptive to it and they are kind of like shocked. <laughs> They're shocked. <laughs> um and, and they really, they do appreciate it. Um, but obviously, you know, you can't always win in this world. And I have received um, some negativity um, online, you know, with comments that say, like, are you going to talk like that when you go back to, like, Australia or London? And to me, I very much, like, see learning power as learning, like, Spanish or someone wanting to learn Chinese. To that, I would say, um, don't feed too much into the negativity because they're the ones that are usually most vocal. The, there's more people on the positive side that would support you than the ones that would detract and say, oh, and whatever negative they would like to, you know, I've, I've experienced my fair share of that even as being Jamaican, where Jamaicans would tell me to stop teaching the language and all this other stuff. But, you know, the mission is clear. and I know what needs to happen in order for us to get the language to a part where a point where it's it's mainstream. I mean, if you look at our neighbors, uh, Haiti, their Creole is mainstream. You can find that anywhere online and you can learn that if you wanted to. I would love to see our language get to that level. So yeah, don't pay attention to the detractors. Do your thing. You know, if you learn the language and you want to use it, go for it. Like, like I said, you know, the majority of people won't have a problem with you. You will do have a couple of naysayers, but ignore it. So do you feel like the aim could be to get um, Jamaican language on Duolingo? Absolutely. 100%. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. that, would, that would be great. And that would be helpful too. <laughs> um, so, okay. I heard what you were saying in terms of when I asked if it was appropriate for a foreigner, someone who isn't Jamaican, to speak power. And you also said, like, it depends on their t intentions because... I acknowledge that there's a very big difference between imitating like the Jamaican accent and then intentionally learning how to speak it. Um, can you talk to me a little bit about like the Jamaican accent and whether that comes or like the tonality of the words and whether that comes into being disrespectful to Jamaicans or whether it's a part of learning, you know, the Jamaican language and, you know, having that authentic, being authentic with sounding like, you know, a local. Well, let me address the first part. 
Jamaicans are a tough crowd. <laughs> I'm sure I'm sure you've experienced that. Jamaicans are a tough crowd. So what they will do before, you know, kind of like let, letting you in, they, they, they want to check you out first to see like what you're about. Um, they don't want to be taken advantage of. And we've seen our fair share of films and songs and social media and stuff like that where people come and they, they mimic, right? And then they'll put something out and then they'll, um, they'll profit off of it. You know what I mean? And then that's by way of appropriation. But then you have the flip side to that where people are earnestly trying to learn. So the authentic Jamaican sound comes from the way how we pronounce like vowels and some of our letters and the nuances where certain consonants meet and it changes, it changes the sound. I don't want to get too much into a lesson, but just to give you like an example. A lot of people when uh, from overseas, the word man, they will say it as man, as in M-O-N, but that's not correct. Um, the reason why we say man is because our English is, 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 it follows the British version of English. So the Brits wouldn't say amen, they would say amen, right? Just like in North America, they would say man in British, in Jamaican, our A is more of an A. So we would say man, not man with an O but just man. Yeah. So just those little nuances, like the way how we pronounce like our A's, like our E-R sounds, the I-R sounds, we replace that with an A sound. So like a, a doctor wouldn't be a doctor in Jamaica, it would be a doctor because the O would make more of an A sound and the O-R would make another A sound. So you hear a Jamaican say, yo, go a doctor, instead of um, go to the doctor. You see what I'm saying? Same thing with the long A sound. It's like an E. So to say like in North America, it would be cake. In Jamaica, it would be cake. So it's just those little nuances that give us the sound. So it's not really an accent per se. It's just the way how we pronounce certain things. Another thing that I wanted to ask you is why do some people discourage the use of Jamaican language. All right. Um, I'm going to touch on something that, you know, a lot of people don't talk about, but it does exist. And in Jamaica there, even though there might not be like racism and stuff like that, there is a class system. So um, you are seen as, and like, as again, this is not all Jamaicans, but to a lot of Jamaicans sometimes within that class system, based on the way you speak and how you express yourself is how you're judged, which sometimes is the furthest thing from the truth because I could speak as the most country as dialect, but you know, I'm still, but um, you're discouraged because it, it's, it's the appearance. So you, you, they'll say to you, oh, your chat's so bad, you know? So if you speak proper English and standard English, you're looked at more favorably. And if you speak the the standard Jamaican language, sometimes you know not so much. And the more rural your accent, the more rural your dialect, the, your version of Jamaican is, is the more you kind of are looked down down upon. And 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 I'm just speaking the truth from my my personal experience. That's what I've seen. So they discourage it because if you go to you know try to find employment and stuff like that you kind of want to be able to learn to express yourself and again as I, I said before and i'll say it again the two can be two things can be true at the same time you can learn standard english and learn how to express yourself but you can also use jamaican you know what i mean and both of them can carry the same amount of weight um we don't say that to like other people with their languages but for some strange reason it's prevalent when it comes to the Jamaican language. I don't even call it Pato anymore because um, you know I want to advocate for it being its own language. So I am no longer call it Patwa. You call it Jamaican language then? I call it Jamaican. Jamaican, okay. Yeah, and, and the Jamaican language unit at the University of the West Indies, I think they're also on a push to get it just Jamaican also and do away with Pato. Thank you for you know educating no me on problem. that. I appreciate that. But that's something that I have noticed about you talking about the classism. Um, definitely, when I spent a lot of like I spent like a couple months in uh, a month and a half in Kingston, I did. That was something that I definitely 
you know, noticed and then hearing you speak about it now and something that I did notice was that a lot of people from Uptown perhaps, I'm not going to say a lot, but like I noticed that perhaps people from Uptown didn't speak as much Jamaican. Um, so how how do we get, like how does one come about, how does one make change from that? How do we change the way that people view that? It's it's awareness. Um, I mean, old habits die hard and certain mentalities are just entrenched. And to some people that will never change. And I get it. But if we could spread awareness to the point where the stigma of it being broken or the stigma of it being improper or bad, um, if that goes away and it becomes more widespread, I'm, I'm sure they know it. They all know it because they'll use it when it's a you know at certain times they'll use it so they all know it you can't live in the country and not know how to use a language they, they they know it yeah but i figure once the stigma of it being improper or bad or broken once that goes away and it's more you know accepted uh mainstream then then that will change that will change hearing you like just talk about that um and i guess with the given mindset that's currently in place in terms of you know, perhaps people do see it as improper, broken, so they shy away from using it, perhaps. Do you think that that Jamaican, like the Jamaican language, is at risk of extinction and does it need, like, active preservation because of that mindset? Um, I, I, it would be a really long time before that really happens. And in order for that to happen, I think, I mean, in our culture too, I see a lot of adaptation of the American culture. You understand? And I hope, you know, that's something that we don't adapt, you know, long-term down the road. Um, there's too much. Jamaica has too much of an impact around the world. We're talking Bob Marley, Usain Bolt. We're talking the food. We're talking people. I've never been to a country that I have not run into a Jamaican. As a matter of fact, I don't think I've ever been to a state in the United States that I haven't run into a Jamaica. So we are everywhere and we tend to be very proud of our culture and our heritage and stuff when we're overseas. So I don't see it going away unless, you know, a couple of generations down the road, they decide um, not to, but um, we're trying to make a push to make sure that we do everything in our power to preserve the language, preserve the culture and our heritage for generations to come. Perhaps enough times throughout history languages have been lost because of that same mindset and it genuinely breaks my heart to think that society can make people feel lesser than say if perhaps they speak Jamaican better than they speak English because speaking Jamaican uh, is a skill learning how to speak Jamaican is not easy and enough times I hear conversations and I still don't understand anything people say if they talk really fast Like I said, I genuinely think that the Jamaican language should be held in a much higher regard and be given more respect than what it's given. And I'm going to speak directly to Jamaicans here because I want you guys to know that the reason why I want to intentionally learn how to speak Jamaican is out of deep respect for everything that you and your ancestors went through to create the language. Because enough times in history, we've seen people come onto land that is not theirs, take people that are not theirs to take and demand for only their language to be spoken. And I can't imagine how many languages have been lost because of that. So yeah, originally the reason why I first wanted to start learning how to speak Jamaican and understand it was because I just was nosy and I wanted to be able to understand. But I have realized that it is so much deeper than that. Because slavery didn't just end when they said slavery ended. That pain is generational. And for that, I am so deeply sorry for everything that your ancestors went through. And that is why I want you to know that when I come to Jamaica, And the reason why I then want to speak Jamaican is to honor all of that. That is why I want to learn how to intentionally speak Jamaican.
I think how I want to leave this is just to perhaps ask the question and this is not just in Jamaica this is worldwide as to why do why does society or why do a lot of people in society idolize a white Eurocentric way of being because I think that is not questioned enough so yeah I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I can't even express how much love I am sending you guys I was gonna give you guys a little bit of an update but I might hang out for that but same way still I hope you guys are taking care of yourselves and I can't wait to see you guys in my next video I also just wanted to say a massive thank you to Andre for joining me and allowing me to pick his brain because I had so many questions. I feel really grateful that I was able to have the opportunity to chat to him. I'm going to leave Andre's details in the description below um, his YouTube channel and where you can find his book on Amazon. So go show him some love and support. Bye.